Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hello everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and once again, we have a brand new show lined up for you this week. I'll introduce you to a Michigan angler who took matters into his own hands, kind of out of necessity, started building his own fishing rods that have turned into works of art. You won't want to miss that story. And believe it or not, we've got an ice fishing adventure in store for you this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We have a few more stories on this week's show. We're actually gonna kick off this week's episode by visiting with the World Ice Fishing Team they were recently doing a little fishing here in the state of Michigan. You won't want to miss that. And we're going to show you what you can be doing with some of that venison burger that's sitting in your freezer. So lots of brand new stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com By Showspan, producing consumer shows that include the ultimate sports show in Grand Rapids. Over 350 exhibitors, outdoor gear, boats, seminars, Lake Ultimate, and Big Buck Night the ultimate sports show at the DeVos Place in Grand Rapids. Mid-Michigan Ponds has been building and maintaining ponds and lakes throughout Michigan for nearly 25 years. We combine biology and heavy equipment to make pondscapes that are sustainable and fishable. More information at midmichiganponds.com. And it is out. We're going to commence fishing here in two minutes. You know, get your spot wherever you think you're going to start. Go! A couple of weeks ago, I was able to spend some time on the ice with the USA Ice Fishing Team to learn a little bit more about this style of competition and also about the possibility of Michigan hosting a world championship in the near future. I'm the coach for the World Ice Fishing Team here and we're in tryouts right now for next year's world championship that uh, hopefully bring it to Michigan. Uh, we've got it all approved and everything's looking good to bring it to Michigan. Now we're doing tryouts here. I got nine, nine gentlemen out here on this afternoon here, putting them through their paces and uh, catching a bunch of fish. They're smaller fish. We're lucky to have ice here for sure. You know, it goes the way the ice belt's been this winter. The way the rules work here is, we're, is it's very regimented. We're about a football field sized area here and you know, they're in boundaries. They got to stay in there. And it's all the, the fish you can catch in, in three hours, the most weight, uh, any, any legal fish counts. Uh, we're doing a catch and release uh, style fishing here. It's the first time that, that that will probably be done at world competition. We're catching them and doing a running tally and then, and then release them. So we're having 100% catch and release here. I know there's a lot of smaller fish, but no reason to kill them. Uh, it's been working out real good. You know, I'm really having high hopes we can bring this to Michigan and be quite a plum on our hat running the world championships here. We'll probably have 13, 14 teams from around the world coming here to fish. 
The ice fishing team is currently in Mongolia, competing for this year's World Championship. Many of these anglers have taken their ice fishing gear all around the world. Fishing for small fish right now, just using palm rods here. It's a little bit faster to catch fish this size. Um, it's really, it's all about speed. You're not really targeting size. You are targeting size, but not, I mean, it's, it's numbers and size. So it's kind of fun, no, no electronics, all hand drilling. Uh, just something different. I fished Bulgaria and Estonia so far. Um, Bulgaria was a nightmare. It was a lot of snow, so for a short guy like me, it was not fun getting around. Uh, catching was okay. Um, went to Estonia last year. And that was fun. Uh, big numbers fish weren't huge there was some kicker fish some big ones but we were catching probably close to 140 150 fish in three hours so you were you were busy it was a really nice country and it's I mean you're getting to travel the world to do what you love and experience things that you know normally you, you wouldn't just go experience. So, going to Mongolia here in five days, I think. We leave, and it'll be another experience. A lot further away, a lot more ice. They're talking close to 50 inches of ice right now. So, not looking forward to cutting through that, but we'll get there. It's supposed to be a lot bigger fish. Most of the fish being caught today were quite small, and this is by design. Catching small fish is very important when competing on the world stage, as it's generally a numbers game when fishing overseas. In this style, there's no electronics. Uh, it's just it's just pure fishing. You drill a hole and you fish down it. And a lot of the, the they're fishing with these uh, European style rods, which are really uh, geared to catching numbers of small fish in a hurry. Uh, you're not reeling them up each time and wasting time doing that. They set the hook. And, and for smaller fish, which, which we tangle with a lot overseas, they got extremely sensitive little tips and stuff that are, that are very crucial to tell them to bite. Where we're typically, we fish bigger fish in the States, uh, which might still happen in, in the competition. But where we were weak last time is we weren't geared enough to catch the small fish when they came. We, we won the first time they came to the United States, won a gold. And then, and then we got a, a fourth place finish the second time they come and because we did not adjust to the small fish as well as they did. Yeah, so I mean this is a training slash tryout. Um, a lot of, there's a few guys here that are on the team that go to Mongolia next week. Um, and then there's a lot of guys looking to try and get into the team for next year. Um, the goal is here is to host in Michigan. And the idea is just to sharpen your skills and prepare everybody for... Um, the competition. You know, going overseas, we, we compete as a team, but you also compete individually. It's a lot like wrestling. Um, there's five anglers from each country competing individually, and then your combined score is for the team. So, in a sense, you're, you're you know, you're working all working together to learn each area that uh, a competitor can fish because you don't know who's going to get to fish it. You don't get to choose. It's a random draw on who gets to fish where. Um, so overseas, we work together to find the best spots in the zones, get everybody on the right on the right tackle, on the right jigs, the right cadence, and the right baiting strategy. And but in the end, when you walk into the zone, you're fishing for yourself for the United States. There's probably no greater feeling than representing the United States in a world stage. I don't probably any sport I'm sure is about the same for me. My love of ice fishing comes from when I was a kid and having the opportunity to go out and represent the United States is probably the accomplishment of a lifetime. I've been fortunate to go all over the world doing all sorts of other things, and honestly, when it comes back down to it, this is probably the most pride I get, um, is going over and competing you know, for a world championship. Thanks to Myron and the crew for inviting me out and for teaching us all a little bit about this style of competition. Good luck and safe travels to the team over in Mongolia, 
and hopefully next year we will be filming a world championship right here in Michigan. In this next story, we are going to meet a man who loves fishing here in Michigan and around the world. Out of necessity, he started making his own rods to fish with, and while he wasn't looking, it turned into an actual business. Just outside of the Port Huron area, this unassuming garage is home to a little slice of a fishing rod builder's paradise. John Johns started building rods nearly 10 years ago as a hobby in a way to develop a rod that was perfect for his own use. That was the birth of two John's custom rods. He had no idea back then that his little hobby would turn into a business where anglers could have custom rods made. I really started building in 2015 after a trip to Panama. Uh, we're down to tuna fishing. I'm fishing with these guys with seven, eight, nine hundred dollar fishing rods. And I was, knew I was going back the next year. I was like, I could build one of these for less. Because I was down there using house rods. And they were okay, but I saw the difference between a house rod and something designed for what we were doing. Throwing big heavy poppers. So I started tinkering with that stuff. and. Then the first couple rods that I made for tuna fishing, uh, they're were, they were good, they worked. Uh, they were, I thought they looked great at the time. Now I look back at them and think, oh my goodness, I was proud of that thing. <laughs> um, and how long ago was that? That was 2015. Okay. Yeah, as far as the actual building. Yeah. You know, okay. And then I um, uh, started you know, out on a trip somewhere out of the country and somebody's like, where'd you get that rod? Oh, I made it. Oh, make me one. And that's where it really got going. You know, there's no way I could compete in the freshwater market. So I was just doing strictly salt water for a while and fresh water for myself. And then over time I saw that need for that jigging rod that was less than six foot. People wanted that jigging rod less than six foot for the walleye that you put a bait caster on and it just wasn't readily available. So I kept working on that and it took me a few attempts to get it right um, to where I was pleased with it. The first couple, hmm, they were just average, not worth the time really. And then um, it was actually probably the fourth, fourth attempt at that rod where I got it to where it was good. Nice. And we started using it like, oh yeah, this is nice. And then the whipping rod, um, I thought, ah, there's no way I could really do anything with a whipping rod and cover my costs. And then I just kept working on it slowly. And all of a sudden, we were like, man, this, this rod's really nice. Very cool. Yeah. So, yeah, the whipping thing is kind of uh, particular to this area of the state, too, would you say? Yes. Um, that's interesting, though, is I got a couple rods over here that a guy just ordered up for using out in New York somewhere. Um, he wanted it a little bit longer, a um, little bigger eyes. He's going to be using the big reel on it. He's fishing in a river out there in 50 foot of water, whipping in 50 foot. And he was from Michigan, but he's out there in New York working. And he started doing some whipping and people thought he was nuts, but then they see what he's got going on. And he came in to get three custom made just the way he wanted them. So it's mainly for right here, St. Clair River okay. on the whipping. I enjoy making the rods. Um, they're more specialized than what you can buy in the store for what we do around here. Um, definitely not going to get rich on this hobby. If you know, it pays. It pays for itself. Definitely not making much. Um, but it's also nice, you know, having something that's customized for what you're doing. It's pretty nice. Um, the jigging rods. Um, you know, there's a few different things I've done to them to make it a little bit easier for the jigging. Um, a little bit better hook set with the handle set up the way I have it. And on the whipping rods also, I use that same longer rear handle on the, on the whipping rods and it's 
such a light rod. I've had so many people come in and say, you know, with the arthritis, they had a hard time with the other rods they'd used, and this is a lot easier um, being a lighter rod. It's uh, a little more user friendly, and it's um, you know a little bit longer than some of the ones you other ones that you'd buy in the store. Still got a, a little bit of give to it, but not too much give. They're just tuned in nice. And how do you sell your rods? You started a website or it just kind of spread? Uh, the, uh, the website needs redone. Uh, it's how not very you? good, but mainly it's word of mouth, um, mostly. Um, some of the bait shops here in St. Clair County have some rods in them. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of rods. Um, first, you got pick a blank and then it's just you know the shaft you have to pick one that's close to what you're looking for and then determine what you're going to do with it different parts because so on the rod lengths you got different powers different actions um, for my walleye jig and rod that I build here it's an extra fast action um, some people like something a little more moderate but you know extra fast you know the tip bends then it gets into the backbone like right away and that's what I look for um, for a walleye jigging rod but we so still you start with the shaft and then you need to determine what you're going to do with the handle what kind of handle you're going to put on it what kind of eyes you're going to put on it how decorative are you going to go so then once you start that um, you get the rod that you're looking for then you do some sanding on the rod where the handle is going to epoxy up where the real seat goes, sand that up so you get um, where it adheres really good. And then before you glue anything on the rod, dry fit all the pieces of the handle. That's, that's a big thing there. And epoxy the handle up. You gotta make sure you find the spine in a rod. Every rod has a backbone. There's a couple new brands out there that don't have them, but pretty much everything in the States has a backbone. You gotta find that and you, turn the rod to where that backbone is going to be on the upside or whenever it's bending over the backbones it's the spine the rod wants to bend one way doesn't want to bend the other way which a lot of people don't realize that and once you find that you start gluing up get the handle glued up the real seat glued up then let it set let that part cure and then you can start working on the eyes the eyes it's all thread work you gotta be a little bit meticulous. Some threads are forgiving, some black threads forgiving. You can have an overlap of a thread and once the epoxy's on, you won't see it. But you get into the other colors of threads, it's very um, noticeable if you were to overlap at some point. The lighter, it seems like the lighter the color of the, the thread, the more you notice it. And then after the thread work's done, then uh, epoxy, you put epoxy on there. Um, there's different types of epoxy as far as what's better, one's better than the other. You know, that's a Ford Chevy conversation there. You know, people argue about it all day long, which one's better. And once you uh, <clears throat> put the epoxy on, you can make sure you don't have any air bubbles in there. Um, you can put a little bit of heat to it and it'll allow that, those air bubbles to release out of the epoxy and self-leveling. So you let it rotate at least 12 hours, depending on your temperature. After the epoxy's cured up, I like to let them sit for a couple days before I actually fish them. Whether it's the, uh, the you know, a whipping rod or a jigging rod or the board rods for a salmon boat or the diver rods, um, you know, I can go try those things out and see how they react. There are so many different ways to fish and different rods to use around the world and right here in our Great Lakes state. It's always inspiring to see our sportsmen and women in Michigan putting their ingenuity to work and creating new and improved gear to enjoy their passions in their own personal way, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, we're here once again in Mount Pleasant at the Wood Shop Social with Jim Wood. Jim, we got some venison burger here. Tell me what we're gonna do today. Well, I know a lot of hunters have burger. A lot of it. Sitting in the freezer, wherever it might be, and you kind of get sick of sloppy joes and whatever you're making with it. Yep. Tacos. 
Uh, so we're going to make chorizo. And chorizo is, for anybody not familiar with that term. So it's a heavily spiced um, Spanish Mexican style sausage. So you, okay. you've got the version in Spain, which is a dried sausage. Hmm. And this is the Mexican version, which is, you know, it's raw. You cook it and all the spices and everything kind of melt together. Super good. It's very good. Yes. Yeah. So how spicy can you, I mean, it can be really spicy or kind of tame. Yeah, I mean, you can. it can be as spicy as, as you want. As you want Every neighborhood in, in northern Mexico will have a different version of this. Okay. Um, and your neighborhood likes it spicy? My neighborhood likes it a little mild. Okay. <laughs> I like it spicy. So what kind of spices are we talking here? So here we have chipotle powder, ancho chili powder, uh, salt, oregano, cumin, and smoked paprika. So we're just going to start our mixer on slow just to kind of blend this up a little bit. Okay. Just kind of evenly distribute that through there. Yep, and then we're just going to slowly, and it looks like a lot for five pounds, and it is, because like I said, this is a, a very heavily spiced sausage. Okay. Then we've got a, this is six cloves of fresh garlic. Okay. So just get that all mixed in there. Yep. And then this is mezcal. You can use tequila, you can use wine. I like mezcal because you can get really smoky mezcal, and that's, hmm. this is really smoky mezcal. And what is mezcal? Mezcal is just the nut, it's very similar to tequila, so there's, tequila is made out of one specific agave, okay. where mezcal can be made out of 50 different ones, and a lot of times they'll smoke the, the leaves and all sorts of different things to give it okay. different flavors. So pretty similar to, okay. Yeah. That's the final product right there. That's the final product. That's the final product. We're done. Okay. It's that simple. Okay, Jim, we made roughly, what did you say, five pounds of chorizo. Yep. Okay, we pulled out maybe a pound or so. What are we going to do now? So now we're going to make what's known as queso fundido. Okay. And that is? So it's a dip where you have your chorizo. Okay. And it's cooked off, and you add it to the bowl, and then we add a bunch of melting cheese on it. Okay. And then it goes into the oven, and then we're going to serve it with uh, fried tortillas and regular tortillas. Okay, we'll get it started. This okay. looks awesome. Then we've got a mixture of <clears throat> onions, bell pepper, and jalapenos. The healthy stuff. The healthy, yes. Right. Because the rest of it, well, no, there's some other healthy stuff over there. Corn. Yeah, I mean, and venison isn't. Yeah. It's a lot this better for you than health food. A lot better for you than pork. And there's some cheese. That's what my cardiologist told me. And then once those start to kind of sweat a little bit, if you will. Okay. Then we're going to add our chorizo right to our pan. Can I brown that off a little bit before we start messing with it too much? Now that we've got that done, I'm going to add a little bit of corn. Nice. Once again, you don't have to. It's up to you. Ooh, good flippage. Now, <laughs> now this is something you don't have to do, but I like to add a little cream and then mm. thicken this up a lot. Traditionally, they won't add any cream to this. This is kind of my thing, just because. And then the cheese will thicken it up even more. Yeah, I just want it to be kind of creamier. So we're just going to let that reduce down until it gets super thick. All right, so now we're going to put this in the bowl. What about the cheese? Relax, bro. We put bro. the cheese on it Rel off relax. the heat? We do, and then we put it in the oven. What? That's crazy talk. So you're basically making like a layered dip, almost. Woo, baby. That looks awesome, Jim. Now you're even going to put more on it now? Yeah. So this is another type of cheese. This is queso fresco. It's basically like a fresh farmer's cheese. Wow. You don't have to use this, but I happen to like it. Then we're going to sprinkle some fresh cilantro on there. Then we've got some pico that we added some pico de gallo that we added some avocado to. Ooh, wee. And what are we calling this dish? Venison chorizo queso fundido. Wow. Does that look good? Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. We've got a lot of great things headed your way. If you'd like to see where we are, what we're up to, and kind of some behind the scenes information about the show, you can always check us out online. 
Well, that's right. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. You can subscribe there, get an email every time we post something new. And there should be some new stuff coming over the next several weeks. We've got our two big buck nights that we're going to be ready to show you here shortly. We've got our in-depth look at the wolf population. So much stuff happening here in the state of Michigan. Make sure you are joining us. And as always, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By SCI. SCI helps protect, promote, and preserve wildlife through conservation practices, which include hunting. SCI supports and funds conservation programs in the state of Michigan. Learn more how you can get involved at a chapter near you. I am a Michigan man Changing seasons paint the scene Like rainbow trout in a hidden stream The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, 